Where did you find this one? Hi, hi, Why don't you try Where did you find that one? Why don't you try this one instead? Oh, that is that's a tablet, a oscilloscope yes, exactly. on a tablet. Exactly. So that's a new uh, new kind of oscilloscope yeah. running on a tablet. Yeah. Brilliant. And, uh, Shall we put this one away? This is, of course. It, is it is absolutely hopeless. Forget. <laughs> Let's move. Yes. Yeah. So, Reimer, that was a very old and nasty big oscilloscope. Yes. Ah. So uh, this one, that's uh, the yeah. smart scope. Uh -huh. and from Lab Nation? Exactly, that's uh, our smart scope and the thing we did is that we took all the core electronics of, of that beast. Mm -hmm. the, the analog oscilloscope? Exactly, and we just put it in a small box. Okay, so that's... That uh, is a very small box compared to the old one. Yes, definitely. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's a metal box, mm -hmm. it is uh, quite, quite small but yeah. uh, still sturdy and contains all the core electronics you need to mm -hmm. have an oscilloscope. Can you mention some core electronics stuff? Uh, well, <laughs> actually, so there's... So the core functionality is, is that it's, a, it's, an, it's an oscilloscope. Mm -hmm. So you have two analog input channels. Mm -hmm. uh, both of them are digitized uh, 100 megasems per second. Well, wow. uh, The nice thing is that there's also onboard RAM. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have uh, four mega samples for each channel, yeah. uh, which allows you to, to, to zoom in on, on a small section of the acquisition um, afterwards. Uh -huh. uh, but that's not it. So on the front, you have the, the uh, oscilloscope. Mm -hmm. For the, the probes to connect? Yes, mm -hmm. exactly, which are, of course, also in the box. Uh -huh. Uh, everything is included uh, together with the smart scope. Um, and then we have uh, on the back side, you see mm -hmm. that you have an, yeah. uh, an, a connector, mm -hmm. uh, which has more functionality. So there is eight logic analyzer uh, A logic channels. analyzer contained exactly. in your instrument. Exactly, yeah. so that's there as well. Okay. Okay. So eight uh, bits, which you can also sample mm -hmm. 100 million times uh, per second. Uh, but that's not it. There's also an uh, AWG output. So that is an arbitrary wave generator. Yes, exactly, okay. exactly. So that's that's an analog uh, signal uh, that the smart scope can generate. Mm -hmm. uh, and to top it off, there's also four digital outputs. So there's uh, four more digital outputs which can also generate yeah. uh, 100 megasamples per second. So this thing, Rymus, sits between your probes and basically an, a computer. Yes. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So there's actually plenty of devices uh, that, uh, that that do this. Yeah. Uh, but we took the whole picture. Uh, from from, mm -hmm. from 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 start mm -hmm. and basically we were funded through a Kickstarter campaign mm -hmm. which allowed us to really think oh, things. You started yes, you exactly. came from Kickstarter. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Tell tell us how did it go? The campaign itself uh, was uh, was a, was a big success. Uh, we overachieved our target by about uh, 600%. Mm -hmm. um, and the nice thing is about Kickstarter is of course you get a lot of of ideas also from the people that back the project. Yeah. And uh, you also don't have any shareholders or, or managers that tell you what to do. Ah, so brilliant. That sounds yes. brilliant. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, but uh, so that also allowed us basically to start from scratch and mm -hmm. to really think things over um, mm -hmm. on how we want to implement an oscilloscope. Mm -hmm. So... But, Trima, where are the controls? Yes. So that's... Where that's, are the controls? That's a major part. That's a major part. Uh, typically, people are used to the, the yeah. knobs. Uh, but if you think about it in 2016, uh, a big benchtop oscilloscope, you have a screen on the, right, on the left side, uh -huh. and then if you want to, to change a small slider, a small trigger uh -huh. level, for example, uh -huh. you need to turn yep. a knob on, exactly. the, on the far right side. Yeah. So we had the impression that, that with today's technology, uh -huh. it should be yeah. possible to do this in it's a It's called a, a user way. interface, yes, isn't it? Yes, exactly, yeah. exactly. You are. So um, we designed something uh, from scratch, uh -huh. uh, and that's basically the, the, the result uh, that we ended up with. Yep. Um, it seems fairly simple, it's only the screen. So you think, okay, where are all the knobs and all the controls? Yeah. But basically everything is in there. Mm -hmm. And so this is the current user interface. Uh, oh. So it looks... Look, the time base, I, could, I can adjust yes, the time exactly. base and so the trigger levels and stuff. Everything that you, that you see, you can simply touch and adjust. So for example, if you want to move the trigger level, you don't need to find a small knob. No, you just take the trigger level and you drag it to the level that, that you want. Okay. If you want to change more things, you just tap it. There's a small menu popping up yep. uh, from which you can select um, mm -hmm. other, other elements. So you have combined, you have used your tablet or your smartphone yes. as both as the display and the user control exactly. interface exactly. in one Everything instrument and hardware. Everything has been hardware integrated. Okay. Everything has been integrated. Now, tell me a bit more, Rima, if you want, because we are electronics people, about the real hardware inside. What is ticking in here? Inside, in, the, in your lab nation yes, scope? Yes, inside it's quite a high quality scope. Uh, so everything... How many bits? How many bits? Well, it's more, it's, there's much more to it than bits. So for okay. example, on the input stage, we have three dividing stages, three uh, uh, multiplying stages, mm -hmm. uh, which are op and driven. After this is two-channel um, ADC, then there's a, a, an FPGA, 
<laughs> which is really essential if you want to have uh, excellent trigger uh, capabilities. Mm -hmm. There's of course the RAM, there are um, logic buffers, mm -hmm. and all of the inputs, they are uh, protected by diodes in, in double okay. directions. Yeah. So the input stages, is, uh, it's really high voltage, so everything is uh, up to 300 volts um, um, certified components. Yeah. Um, everything is double diode protected, so it is all the components are in there to make a Good. to make a, a quality scope. Basically. How is it powered, uh, Reimer? Yes, so because I don't see any bulky, you know. No, exactly, exactly. So that's also an, a nice thing um, for the smart scope. The software basically is, of course, completely free, um, and we didn't want to target only tablets. Okay. Huh? So we wanted basically to to also be able to use it on. Uh, computers, mm -hmm. uh, but even on, on phones. Mm -hmm. uh, so we made sure that from the, from the beginnings, we made sure that our software runs on all of the possible platforms. Can you mention them again? The sure, we have of course uh, Windows, yeah. for Windows um, um, laptops, uh, so the, all the, the, even we go back to Windows XP, <laughs> 7, <laughs> 8 and 10. Okay. Uh, there is uh, Linux support, there is uh, OS X support, yeah. uh, and then for tablets and smartphones we have Android mm -hmm. support, so basically you just connect it with a single cable uh, so one cable is enough, you don't need to have additional power, uh -huh. it is basically powered by the tablet itself with yeah. a single cable. What, and what, Reimer, what was the issue with I iOS? Yes, exactly. What, the, I seem to remember yes. something about jailbreak. Yes, with iOS it's always a bit of a difficulty uh, for, uh, for uh, an, an iOS device, basically. Mm -hmm. You need to have access to the USB port, yeah, sure. and that is restricted by Apple. Yeah. Um, so in the beginning we were always a bit catching up with Apple, so they didn't mm -hmm. made a new iOS mm -hmm. release, we need to wait for jailbreak. It was slow. <laughs> um, actually, everything was a bit slow, <laughs> and okay, we were not happy, the customers mm -hmm. were not, not happy, so mm -hmm. uh, that's why we're spending uh, the past months a lot of time in making a solution for this, uh, which will be the, the network bridge, which means that basically you have a small computer like Raspberry Pi, for example, which connects the, to the smart scope mm -hmm. and uh, flings the data over the network. Okay. Yeah. And if it's over network on the Wi-Fi, uh, then you can uh, access that data on your uh, iDevice. Okay. So you can, crawl, you can control the smart scope mm -hmm. um, and, you can, uh, and you can fetch the data from, from the smart scope okay. itself. Yeah. So today it's already in the App Store, uh, as you can see. So this is yeah. on, on my phone, which is actually not uh, jailbroken. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, but it's the same app. It's exactly the same app, which allows you to, to control uh, the smart scope. So we have set up our signal generator, a Regal in this case, and two channels going out into the Lab Nation room. So I will see a beautiful picture of a single. Yes, box. exactly. So this is the signal generated by the uh, AWG. Uh, and basically what you see, so that it's like a, like a regular scope, as so you have mm -hmm. two channels uh, which are nicely mm -hmm. in sync. Uh, if you want to change, uh, change the voltage level, for example, it's, it's quite simple. You can just uh, pinch to zoom, ah. both on the voltage uh, axis as a time axis. Mm -hmm. As I said already, on the trigger you can simply change this is trigger level. Set. Yes, yeah. trigger level. Mm -hmm. You can change trigger channel. Everything is quite uh, quite easy uh, to change. Uh, then also the nice thing is that we mm -hmm. also want to make sure that it works very nicely, of course, for uh, high speed signals, because we agree that maybe the sampling rate is not the fastest on the market. Uh, it's 100 megasamples per second. Okay. Uh, but it's with a fairly good reason. There, so you optimized for uh, for for the use cases basically, and for most use cases, uh, 100 megasamples per second is really more than enough. Mm -hmm. But given the the low uh, sample rate, um, we made sure that there are a couple of features in there that really make it still a high quality scope. For example, sure. uh, if you would really uh, zoom out, mm -hmm. uh, then typically what happens is that most scopes uh, they would start aliasing. Yeah, uh, because you only have quite only few uh, sample points. So basically, what you would see here is just a couple of uh, data points which, which show the the, the, the pulse. Uh, in our case, we made sure that we have peak detect um, in the acquisition, mm -hmm. so that even if you zoom out on a large uh, portion mm -hmm. uh, of data, mm -hmm. that still you, you see that there is actually uh, data inside. Mm -hmm. If you stop it, all of the data is transferred from the smart scope to the tablet, yeah. allowing you to zoom in uh, on all of the data. So you can see the acquisition stopped, and still you can zoom in mm -hmm. to really a fine level of detail. Yep. Uh, you can use it. Uh, you can you can pinch here, or you can also zoom uh, yep. zoom on the top sides, mm -hmm. where you see the contents of the RAM, and basically you can uh, you can very easily mm -hmm. see which uh, which area you're zooming. Yeah, in. and that again is the RAM inside your lab. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Um, then um, there's actually that's that's the logic analyzer part. So we also have. Um, the, the the digital modes uh, where you can see the you have um, eight logical uh, channels brilliant and there's as yeah. well the, the mixed modes where you have also the eight channels available and also uh, one analog channel 
Uh, and you can, for example, trigger on an analog channel and mm -hmm. then see the, the digital contents uh, or vice versa. That's uh, completely up to you to choose. And still, you will still have the, the full RAM access yeah. uh, both on digital yeah. and analog. That is very reassuring to be able to see the analog channel on yes, top. Yes, sometimes there's quite a lot of use cases that it helps. Uh, mm -hmm. Because, for example, it might be that your transmission seems fine yeah. in the digital domain, but still it's not working. Exactly. And then you can attach an analog probe mm -hmm. and see, okay, my volatile level is not as expected or there's, a or there's of some device. noise yes. coming. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's actually a very useful uh, user feature as well. Yeah.